Hi everyone, it's Dr. Ryan here from Boards and Beyond. I'm very excited to answer some of the questions many of you sent in about study strategies and study tips. So let's jump right into that. How do I learn EKGs? Great question, question I get all the time. And to be completely honest with you, the only way to learn EKGs is to go do a residency or fellowship where you have to look at them every day on your own patients. That's really the only way I ever learned. I never got very good at EKGs until residency and then I really didn't get good until cardiology fellowship. If you're a medical student and you're just dabbling in EKGs where you look at them here and there on a certain rotation and then not again for weeks or months, it's going to be very hard to learn and that's normal. If that's the situation you're in, just focus on learning some basics, recognizing some classic findings and classic rhythms, but you're never going to get comfortable until you go out and look after patients who need EKGs and you have to look at that EKG and make a decision on what to do for your own patient based on what you see. What are your techniques for learning effectively? Um, another good question. Everybody's different. So if I had had all the resources that exist today, back when I was in medical school, first of all, I would have been very happy because life would have been a lot easier. I just had to read textbooks to learn things. It was not easy. But I love learning from videos. And in fact, I made the Boards and Beyond videos to be the type of lecture I would have appreciated as a student. It's the way I would have wanted to learn. So I would have watched something like that to build my foundation. And then I would have just done lots and lots of practice questions. I, I always did well in college and even med school in courses where the faculty member provided lots of practice questions. I used to just devour them and pick up the themes and get better and better at it. So that would be my way to learn, but take it with a caveat because everyone is different. Uh, some people love Anki, some people don't. Some people love Sketchy, some people don't. Use what works for you. Words and Beyond helped immensely since they were released during my M1. I was wondering if you could recommend or have any videos for clinical medicine during residency years for IM family medicine. As a matter of fact, I have a great recommendation. So a couple of years ago, we got the idea at Boards and Beyond to make a video series that's now out. It's called Clinical Confidence. And it's a video series that teaches you all the things you need to know to function in the hospital and the clinic. Things like how to admit patients, discharge patients, write diet orders, what are the different types of IV lines. And I wish I'd had this series when I was starting internship. It, it has so much in it that's pure gold. So if you're trying to get ready for residency in internal medicine or family medicine, I really recommend the Clinical Confidence series. Do you think the rumors of step one increasing in difficulty since pass fail are true? Do you have any opinions on the increase in fail rates? Um, I can tell you my opinion, which is that I don't think step one has necessarily gotten that much harder, but I do think that when it went pass fail, this made it hard for students to know how much to study. When it was scored, people knew they had to study with everything they've got, and people started studying months and even years in advance of the test because they wanted to get the highest possible score. When it went past fail, people knew they didn't have to work that hard, but how hard do you have to study? And I think initially after it went past fail, we saw an uptick in failures because people just hadn't prepared enough. The, the pendulum is swinging back and forth, and I think once it's been past fail for a few years, people will have a better handle on how to prepare, but it is tricky to know how to prepare for a test as hard as step one when it's not being scored so you don't need to maximize your score. I think that puts people in a tricky situation where they're not sure how hard to work. Do you have any test taking strategies you would recommend for board material? A couple I've implemented recently really helped when answer choices are confusing come up with a simple answer in your head and then go for the answer choice closest to that. When you're stuck between two choices, reason why one is incorrect over which is correct, since you can't razzle dazzle your way to a true answer, but you need real facts for incorrect. Great question. Uh, basically a question about test taking techniques. So some of the basic techniques that I recommend are, first of all, I always read the answer choices first because many questions have a really long stem, but then the question is asking about something unrelated. So I like to know that going in to have a sense of what kind of information I'm looking for. 
Uh, and then I've said this many times to students, get used to guessing because that's part of all board exams. So many times you're going to be faced with questions where you don't immediately recognize the answer and you have to be systematic and cross off the ones that are wrong. And if you get it down to two choices and you have to guess that you have a 50% chance of getting that right. So that helps a ton. And then finally, if you go to the Boards and Beyond website, I have a bunch of little essays I've written on how to effectively prepare for the step one exam. And you can read through those. It's got lots of tips for me for things like this. Tips to ace the step three exam. Uh, good question. I think to get ready for the step three exam, you first of all need to have had good clinical experience leading up to it. So most people take this at the end of their internship and hopefully you've had a really good intern year where you've seen a lot of disease and taken care of a lot of patients and all that information is going to help you on the step three exam. I think our step two, three video series at Boards and Beyond is a great way to get ready for the test. But then beyond that, you need to just do lots and lots of questions. Um, we have a question bank associated with the step two, three product. I think that's a great place to start. But then many people do other question banks to try and get themselves ready for the test and really just lots of questions leading right up to the day of the exam. I'm interested in the field of cardiology. What are good resources and tips for cardiology studying at the intern level? Uh, good question. If you're an intern in internal medicine and you want to go into cardiology, the best advice I have for you is to be a great intern. Try not to worry too much about cardiology because you will learn all that in fellowship. But whatever rotation you're on, whether it's outpatient clinic or MICU or emergency department, you want to be the best intern possible because that's where you're really picking up lots of things that you'll use later when you get into fellowship for cardiology. And also when you apply for cardiology fellowship, you want your application to be filled with recommendation letters where people say this applicant was an outstanding person in the emergency room, in the MICU, on the renal service or whatever. So I don't think you need to focus too much on cardiology other than just appreciating all the cardiology in the patients you're taking care of. But beyond that, really just focus on being a great intern. That's the path that leads to a cardiology fellowship. Dear Dr. Ryan, why do we have to do UWorld when Boards and Beyond QBank exists? Great question. Uh, I'm very proud of the Boards and Beyond QBank. We worked very hard on it. A lot of experts contributed. We matched the questions very closely to the type of questions you will see on the MBME exams and on your actual step one exam. So I think it's a terrific resource that is sometimes underutilized. So I highly recommend it. Now, having said that, it's really a good idea to just do lots and lots of practice questions before step one. So you may want to do the Boards and Beyond QBank and also do UWorld and also do AMBOSS. But I am very proud of the questions and I think the quality is outstanding and they're just as good as questions you would get anywhere. So I highly recommend them. So that's it for questions. Thank you to everyone who took the time to send in questions. It was a blast to answer them. Uh, this was so much fun. We may do it again in the future, and I would love to get more questions from students. I'm always happy to answer them. So good luck to all of you in your studies, and best of luck going forward in your careers.